If it could go wrong this week, it did. I mean, everything I touched just went south. Everything I said made people mad when I didn't mean for it to. Um, I would get myself into situations that I didn't want to be in. It's just been that kind of a week. But I have a story that I want to share with you, true story, that helps me get through it. And it deals with a fork. Hi, I'm Scott. Thank you for joining me on 45 RPM. I'm going to share with you a story about a little senior adult lady that I knew. This lady was fantastic. Her name was Mary Alice. Uh, my nickname for her was Morales. I got to know her, um, especially on a trip that we went to, to Gatlinburg, Tennessee. We were in Pigeon Forge and we were in a little amusement park there and they had this big roller coaster and she came up to me, she said she wanted me to ride the roller coaster with her. And I was like, are you sure? You know, I mean, this is a really big, fast, high, you know, jolting roller coaster. She said, what are you saying? Are you saying I'm too old to get on this roller coaster with you? And I said, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. But in my mind, I could just imagine being the one to pull back up at the station from the, from the ride and be the one who helps get her off whenever she's had some kind of stroke or something. You know, it scared me to death, but... Either way, she wanted to do it, so we did. And I want you to know, the whole time we were on that roller coaster, she had her arms up in the air, and she's like, ah! And she's hollering and yelling. We got to the end of it. She was laughing. She was, in fact, I was wondering if she was crying. She had tears. She had a blast. And from that day forward, we were really close friends. She lived right across the, the way from the church, kind of up a little hill. And I started looking forward to these times whenever she would call me and she would say, hey, why don't you come on over? I've got some leftovers. What that meant was she was a widow. She had cooked and she had more than she could eat by herself and she wanted some company at lunch. So I would go over there and I would sit down with her and we would have lunch. This woman could cook. It didn't matter if it was roast beef or chicken and dumplings or turkey and dressing. This woman could cook. She made the best macaroni and cheese I've ever put in my mouth and it did not come out of a box, right? But my favorite part of the meal, I'm not lying when I tell you this, my favorite thing about her meal is at the end of it, most of the time, whenever she would walk by, she'd pick up my plate and be taking it to the kitchen. She would take my fork off and she'd hand it back to me and she'd say, hang on to your fork. Man, when she did that, I knew what was coming. That meant there was some pie, there was some cobbler, there was a piece of chocolate cake. There was something that I needed that fork for. And it got to be something that I would just laugh about and she knew that I was waiting for her to say, hang on to your fork. It kind of got to be a slang that we would use even during other times. One time she was uh, going to visit a friend who was sick and she said, I told my friend just to hang on to her fork. Another story about her is right before she passed away, the last time I spoke with her, I did not know that she was as sick as she was. And um, I told her, I says, you know, it's okay. You know, we're gonna get through this. And in my mind, I'm thinking getting through this doesn't necessarily mean we're healed on earth, right? Sometimes it means we graduate to glory. So I said, we're gonna get through this. It's gonna be okay, Mary Alice. She said, oh, I'm not worried. I'm hanging on to my fork. Wow. What faith that was, you know? It um, kind of brings tears to my eyes because this woman had no fear. She had no uh, worry about bad things whenever they would go on. If the worst things could happen around her and she would just keep a smile on her face because her faith was solid. So what about you? What's going on in your life? What's going on in my life? It's tough days right now, man. Gosh, it's been so tough here lately. I'm not kidding. And some of you guys, oh my gosh, because I, I carry on the burden of everyone around me. And when you tell me things to pray for you about or I find out what you're going through, it grieves me along with you because I love you and I care about you. Bad, tough things are going on around us. But I want to tell you something right now. When you're going through those tough times, me, the week that I'm having right now, hang on to your fork. There's something better coming. There is something more coming that we need to know about, that we need to be encouraged about. We need to be ready for. You know, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has even possibly conceived the things that God has in store for you and for me. 
No eye has even seen it or ear has heard it. What an encouragement that is. Hang on to your fork, people. Hang on to it because there is something better coming. This might be the training ground. This might be the three course or the four course, but we got something coming that's even better and we need to hang on to the fork because if we'll do that, then we will know that all the stuff that's going on right here doesn't really matter. It doesn't, what we're doing right here is just practice. Now, it does matter that we follow Christ. It does matter that we be a good witness. But what I'm talking about is when things happen to us, whenever the devil comes at us, whenever the world affects us, when we are in, in pain and we hurt and, and we've got all these things that, 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 that hurt us, hold on to your fork. Hold on to your fork, people. Hold on to your fork. <laughs>